42% of consumers now get their information from social media, and 40% of them will act on it. So we're still using, and I look at my organization, we still use traditional marketing mix. And they say, well, I need more money to do this, do this. No, you actually need less money because you shouldn't be doing this, and it's cheaper to do. You know, uh, get the bloggers together, get the patient community groups, and the bloggers tend to be the patients, and have a conversation with them. What do they need? What is it that, that we need to give them? We had one clinical trial of a, um, for children, pediatric uh, children with a rare disease, where we got the parents together. They changed our entire protocol design. And once we get you know, to market and we're able to say, this is how you do it, I think more of those examples will then make leaders change. But we need people to have the strength and the chutzpah to stand up in those internal meetings and say, no, we're not gonna start this protocol. I know first patient, first visit is August, but we're gonna wait to November, because otherwise, when we get to market, it'll be three years before we reach um, the sales level that we expected or the number of patients reached that we expected. So we look at this at Decada, we have this algorithm <laughs> that I was telling you about that we use that goes patient, trust, reputation, business. And it's been a really unique experience for me coming to work for a Japanese company because in Japan, it is just amazing how much reputation of your company matters and kind of what is your obligation to society and, and your obligation as a healthcare company. Um, and so it, it's, a, you know, basically it says, you know, what does a patient need from us in any kind of situation we're looking at? What is the best thing to build trust with our stakeholders, whether that be patient associations, providers, uh, government um, regulators? What's the right thing for the reputation of our company long term? And then how do you drive business um, through that? And so I do think it is going to need to be taking this long view. And the way I think of it is, and I, I, you know, I agree, I don't think we... It's not that we don't have the people, I just think we haven't done it and haven't needed to do it and haven't necessarily rewarded that because the long-term benefit isn't necessarily the best short-term benefit. Um, but I think we, we kind of need leaders, and I've just recently replaced half my leadership team, so I, I know whereof I speak now. Um, we need leaders who have a, what, what I call it is a, a radar and a compass. So you need to have that radar to know exactly what's going on around you to be able to... Um, look at all the changes happening in your environment to be able to engage in it and kind of understand patterns and see where those patterns might be going. But then you need that compass to say, you know, I'm, not gonna, I'm not gonna do something just for the short term if it's not the right thing for the long term. And you know, how do we make good decisions in this situation, whatever that may be. When I took the job on, um, medical were seen as a weaker or lesser partner than commercial. And Part of my role has been to strengthen the medical organization and say, we're the guys that know about our medicines. We've got the data, we've got the information. We can really be a strong partner. But I've emphasized it's not a strategic partner because people think, oh, are we going to, is the balance going to shift and are actually medical going to be superior to commercial? I'm saying, no, don't think that way. It's about partnership. So I think the roles will evolve. But it is interesting that it's a partnership and a relationship. And when one side changes, the other side has also got to change. And some of my commercial colleagues maybe weren't prepared for medical to change. As CSL has, has grown to an organization with over 16,000 employees, and in 1990, or 2004, I think we had around 6,000. So we've, we've grown significantly in the last uh, 12 years. Uh, it, it, it gets harder. But I never want the organization to lose that connection with the patients. We routinely connect patients with our staff at all levels. I recently attended a global finance conference in Germany. And the last day, we had two patients come and speak to all of the folks that do all the accounting in the back room and day on day are doing the budgets and you know, putting out the numbers. But it was the most impactful part of the meeting, I think. I mean, I'd like to also get the numbers on time, but it was, it was really impactful. And, and the response from the finance group is like, boy, this was great. You know, I really understand what we do now and why it's so important. So it connects people, and we do that across the organization at meetings around the world. Work every day like somebody's life depends on it because it usually does. And I think that, that that's really the important part of the, the message because it is about the patients and it is about the patients and it's about patients. So I think that's really the key thing. The third thing that we've done as we've changed the model is invested heavily in 
in multi-channel interaction. So there's a belief that obviously if you're going to change the way your uh, sales professionals interact with um, customers, if you're going to change the way in which your medical staff are interacting with customers, then actually you need to evolve the model to say, well, I'm not always going to, if you like, push information out into the external world. What we need to do is to create a, a tailored kind of menu of multi-channel opportunities, which means that our customers can interact with us pretty much when they want to, be it joining in a webinar live or pulling down video and educational materials whenever is the right moment for that particular customer or patient. Um, click to chat, so you have the opportunity now to click a button and connect in with, uh, with medical staff when you have a, a question or a desire to kind of, um, you know, have an interaction of some description with GSK. So we've built a, a kind of a, a, a multi-channel set of offerings to wrap around the human beings, either medical or commercial, that we, um, you know, that, that we um, have interfacing with our customers. And everything we've done and every question that we ask and every action we take, we always say, if the patient was in the room with us, now, what would they think?